So there's a big controversy going around online about the issue, one of the most important issues in dispensationalism that a lot of our people have gotten into was salvation. And that has been the crucial issue that helped them a lot through our dispensationalism teachings. Because there are so many different religions that will show you verses that shows you to get saved by works. We believe salvation by faith alone, not by works, no matter what. But what are you going to do with verses that show works for salvation? That's a problem. Our simple solution is dispensationalism, which is rightly dividing. So dispensationalism, if you don't know what that is, please watch our intermediate discipleship video, number three and number four. Also follow the homework assignment. If you don't, then you're not going to understand and you're going to totally misunderstand what I'm going to teach here. Okay, so basically, in dispensationalism, we believe that Christian salvation is faith, not by works at all. Faith, no works at all. But then what are you going to do with verses that seems to show faith and works for salvation? The simple answer is this, you divide it. Those verses are going to be referring to Old Testament Jews, not Christians today in the church age. We're not under the Old Testament. What about verses that seem to show faith and works for salvation? Those are tribulation. That's how we simplify it, the tribulation for faith and works. So by dividing it that way, any verse you find that has to do faith and works, you'll find out that it will always relate to Jews preparing for the end times tribulation or Jews who were in the Old Testament. Anything that has to do with faith, not by works, is the Christian church and we're distinguished from this. Now there's a bunch of people who hate this teaching of dispensational salvations, we call it. They hate this teaching. Why? Because it rescued a lot of people from false doctrine of works for salvation. We just divide it. So then what they will do is that they will try to be dishonest and prove that this is only faith and this is only faith. There are no works in those verses. But by doing that, that is not convincing to a different cult and religion out there when they look at that verse. So that is not honestly reading the scriptures. So in this teaching, I am going to defend dispensational salvations. Those verses are talking about faith and works for salvation in Old Testament or tribulation for Jews. Christians, we're not by works, we're faith alone. So I'm going to prove the points. Now, I would advise you to watch the video, which I already mentioned, Satan lied to you about Old Testament salvation. That's the video that I already taught. You can watch the video link. I'll put it below. Okay, I'll put it below. Watch that one and you'll understand why Old Testament salvation was faith and works. Now I'm going to answer the criticisms against this. So they're going to use Genesis chapter 6. Some of them will argue this, that Noah, he did not uh, have faith on what God said about there will be a flood coming, so he had to do works for salvation. So you might remember me teaching that, right? So again, watch the video if you don't remember. We believe Noah was saved by faith and works. Why? Because he believed what God said about the coming judgment of the flood. That's why he had to do the work of building an ark. Building an ark is a lot of work. So that's faith and works for salvation in the Old Testament for Noah. So some critics, they don't like that argument. So what they're going to do is use Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 9, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. So thus, it seems like Noah was saved by grace alone, by faith alone. There were no works involved right here. And then notice right here, the coming judgment is mentioned at verse 12 through 13. See, his faith about the coming judgment of the flood was after he was saved by grace at verse 8. That's what they're going to answer. So we argued here, remember, we argued here that Noah, he had to have the faith of God's coming judgment of the flood, right, to produce the ark. That's what proved faith and works, correct? So then the critics, they're going to answer this. No, notice that Noah was saved by grace first. 
Then the later verses, he believed about the flood. So that's how they get around this passage right here. Now, how we argue about, now how we argue is this, is that, first of all, that's not my argument. Noah's faith is not just the flood, you gotta understand. Noah's faith and works, you gotta realize this, it's consisting his whole life. And that's not just Noah, that's all Old Testament saints. So some of my critics will say, he's just picking Noah, he's just picking Noah, because that's so easy and stuff like that. No, I'm talking about all Old Testament saints. I'm talking about all Old Testament saints. In their lifetime, their works must show their true faith in God. See, the flood is just one example. It's just one example of Noah's faith in believing that his works showed in building the ark. But that's just one time in Noah's life. We're talking about his entire lifetime. He had to believe whatever God said, and then his works had to show it. Because the idea is this, is that if you look at verse 8, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, right? Sure. But do you know why he found grace? Because of verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a what? Just man and perfect in his generations. See that? Why was Noah saved by grace? The answer was because he had works right here. There is no doubt it's faith and works. Now, the critics, what they like to do is switcheroo that. They like to switcheroo saying, no. Verse 8, he was saved by grace first. Verse 9, it's just his works that just showed his faith. It had nothing to do with his salvation. That's how they like to argue. No, that's being totally dishonest. Look at the whole... Okay, here's the idea. There is no doubt, like I repeat again, why did Noah found grace? Because of his works. That's why. It will still show that fact. Why is this getting more complicated, Pastor, in the argument? Because that's how confusing these people are. See? It's so obvious when you read that passage, when no, why did Noah found grace? Because he did the works. But then they're going to get more complicated, complicated. See, we wouldn't have jumped into this complication if you just believed what it said. Amen. It showed faith. It showed grace, verse 8. Verse 9, it showed works. It's that simple. You leave it as it says. Let's play their complicated game then. So they claim verse 8 is first, and then verse 9, the works is after that? No. Verse 8, why did Noah found grace? Because of verse 5, his works. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Verse 6, God repented of that. Verse 7, God wants to destroy the wickedness of man. But there was one man who did not commit that wicked work. Yep. Verse 8, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. See, it's because of his works. No, he was saved by grace, not by works. Okay, then if Noah committed the wicked works at verse 5 through 7, you think Noah would have found grace? It's more honest to say verse 9 and verse 5 through 7 is all in that one context of your small little verse 8. Yep. It's the same thing. How dishonest is these people are. Here's what they keep dodging. My question again, what did Noah, and I'm not just talking about Noah, any Old Testament saint, what did they believe in for salvation if you insist it's faith alone? You never answer that question. You always dodged it. You just tried to critique me of, he never believed in the flood. Okay then, I'll believe that with you. I just admitted it. Then what did he believe in for his salvation? You're not specific. Ask that to any lost soul today, okay? Or just have faith in God for salvation. What do you think the person's going to believe in then, huh? You need to tell them specifically what they need to have faith in God for salvation. That's what Christians do today. We tell them it's faith in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, what did they have to do? Their works showed what they believed in. That's the specific faith right there. See that? Their work showed what they believed in. Because if they failed in that work, it showed they did not believe in God for salvation. Duh! Okay, now the next one. Romans chapter 2, verse 13 through 17. Romans chapter 2, verse 13 through 17. These people will post endless videos critiquing, critiquing Bible believers, and they're... 
And they're like saying, oh, but I'm just a video ministry. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a church. Well, it doesn't change the fact you're still obsessed over a person. And I don't care if you're a video ministry, any ministry at all that's dedicated and obsessed with critiquing Bible believers who believe in dispensationalism, the King James Bible is perfect, do soul winning and try to get people involved in church. You got a mental issue right there. You got a mental, you, you accuse us for having an arrogant, dark spirit. What hypocrisy, you whited sepulcher as Jesus called you at Matthew 23. And as a matter of fact, you actually look whited sepulcher too. <laughs> Let's look at Romans chapter two, verse 13 through 14. Now, again, watch my video, Why Satan Lied About Old Testament Salvation, because I'm not going to expound this. So Romans chapter 2, verse 13 through 14, we use this as proof that if you were a Gentile in the Old Testament, see, you did not have the law, right? The Old Testament law. So how are you supposed to know the works? So if you were a Gentile that time, Romans chapter 2, verse 13 through 14 prove the law was in your conscience. That's the idea. And notice in that passage, it proved right there your salvation depended on how you followed the works in your conscience. So remember this, this is not Christian salvation. We believe faith alone, not by works. Gentile in the Old Testament, their salvation was faith and works. Now, how the critics will like to argue against this is that, oh, it's just hypothetical. Wow, you notice this? I'm glad. You know, they think that by critiquing endless videos that they're going to win a point. I'm going to show right there they're going to be their own destruction more and more. Yap all you want because I'm going to prove to you more and more and more you're using Alexandrian interpretation rather than reading the verse as it says. Amen. Who would like to say the scripture verse that you're reading is hypothetical? rather than just reading it as it says. Oh, so this is hypothetical. Dangerous. And these people profess to believe the King James Bible as they read it as they say? Troubling to you. Now, their justification is this, Romans chapter 3. That's their justification. Because look at Romans chapter 3, and then verses 9 through 20. Romans chapter 3, verses 9 through 20. So here's their logic. Okay, here we go again. Here we go again. They're going to explain. They always, they just refuse to read as it says. They have to do wordplay and find all these kind of deductions to add together and give you some kind of interpretation. Why so much work and so much effort? Why not just leave it as it says, huh? And then you just divide it to the time period. Simple. Okay, this is how they deduce their deductions together and come up with this teaching. This is hypothetical. Why? Because... Paul was just simply saying, if you kept all the law, then you are saved. But in Romans chapter 3, verse 9 through 20, Paul proved no one could keep the law. That's why Romans 2 was hypothetical. It was just simply pointing the fact that, yeah, if you kept the law, then you're saved. But in Romans chapter 3, realistically, you can't keep all the law. That's how they get around it. Now, the problem is this, okay? Verse 9 through 20, you can read all of that, all you want. And it is true. No one can keep the law. No one was justified by the law. True. But read verse 21. 9 through 20, no one can keep the law. Got it. 21. But what? Now. See, the Christian day and age today. Now, the righteousness of God with what? Without the law is manifested. Ah, so today in the Christian church age, now we have the righteousness of Jesus, Jesus without the law. See that? Being witnessed by the what? Law and the prophet. Wait a minute. So there was a law before then. Faith and work. See, there was a law before, but now, Paul said, is what? Not the law. Now, see that? You know what this proves? There's a change right here. There's a dispensation. Let's keep reading right here. 
Verse 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. That's why verse 23 says no one is clean enough to go to heaven. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Verse 24, you're justified freely. 25, 26, 27, all the way down. You notice right here, that's why no one is saved by the law. Why? Because Jesus Christ sacrificed now. Look at Romans 2 again. Now the righteousness of God. Based on what? Christ's payment on the cross. Based on this. That's why you don't go by the law for your salvation. That's why you go by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. But before this time period now, without the law, right? Were they in the law? Weren't they under the law? Yes. Not only that, Jesus did not die yet. You can't get this righteousness without the law until you get this payment first, Jesus dying on the cross first. That's why you don't keep the law for your salvation. It was based on this time period, this work of Jesus Christ. To say it outside of the work of Jesus Christ is attacking his attribute. That's right. You can never get to heaven except what? When Jesus died for you. That's how you get to heaven by God's grace. Unless you want to say that God lets, gives his grace without the payment and death of Jesus Christ, then his grace is contaminated because grace must reconcile with holiness. Holiness must judge sin no matter what. The only way you can reconcile grace and holiness is his cross. Amen. Don't give some kind of wrong type of grace right there. You cannot do that. Because look at Romans 2. Romans 2, we read that, right? Romans 2, verse... Uh, the same passage 13 and 14, were they without the law or were, are they under the law? The law of conscience, right? Isn't that what the verse said, Romans chapter 2? So this is under the law. Romans 3, based when Jesus Christ died, when is that? Without the law. Now, look at Galatians. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 21. These people, they don't look at the different time periods. See that? Dispensationalists look at the different time periods. We rightly divide it. These people like to just assimilate everything together, mashed potato. That's very troubling. They, they don't rightly divide this. Now look at Galatians chapter 3. If they insist this, then let me explain this way, okay? Look at verse 21. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid, for if there had been a law which, uh, if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. See, Galatians is repeating Romans 3. You notice that? So Romans 3, Galatians 3, similar chapter, no surprise right there, is giving the same idea. No one can keep the law for salvation. We admit that. We admit that no one is perfect enough to keep the law for salvation. That's why they were not perfect enough to go to heaven. You know where they went? They had to go down to Abraham's bosom. And I'm going to, uh, it's like no matter how many times I repeat, they're not going to get this. So that's the reason why we admit it. Yes, no one can keep the law for salvation. That's why they had to go to Abraham's bosom and wait for Jesus Christ to pay it. Yep. See, yep. Jesus Christ didn't pay it yet. So because he didn't pay it yet, they could not get saved by grace alone. They had to go. They had no choice. See that? There was no salvation through Jesus Christ's death available that time. They had no choice, so they had to do law that time. And then because they had no choice but to go by the law, but they're not perfect enough to go to heaven, they had to go to Abraham's bosom. Now, oh, this is limbo, limbo. No, that's not limbo, that's scripture, that's scripture. L read Luke 16, Abraham's bosom, they're down there. What did Abraham say? They had Moses and the law and the prophets, and they were down there in Abraham's bosom. Limbo? No, this is scripture. You made that up. I wonder who taught you that. Did you make it up? Then you must be someone that's creating your own doctrine. Something strange right here. So anyways, the thing is right here is that, yes, no one can keep the law. That's why they had to go down there. But they had no choice but to still, but to still 
go by the law because there was nothing. Amen. Oh, I don't believe in that. You're making it up. No, keep reading. Verse 21, 22 admitted the law could not save. That's why it was a temporary basis. But, verse 23, but before faith came, we were what? Kept under the law. Look at this. This is Re Romans 2. Yeah. Romans 3. Galatians 3. You're not reading. Yeah, amen. Before faith came. See, they didn't have this salvation by faith in Jesus Christ. They had no choice but to be kept under the law. Oh, no, they, they received this somehow. No, shut up. Read that verse. It says, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. I did not mean to say shut up to you. I just, the scripture told you to shut up. That's what it said. So if they say that, oh, no, no, they somehow had access to this, the scripture tells you shut up. Uh, you know why? You make endless videos. So no one's watching you anymore, except your own little goons. But we got people watching us online that have been so grateful for teaching dispensational salvation because that has rescued them from a lot of wrong doctrines out there. So that's the idea right here. I mean, my goodness. The last argument that they like to use is Ezekiel chapter 18. So I'm just going to make this very quick and easy right here. Ezekiel 18, the passage said that if a soul committed wickedness, and he, drew, and he quit his righteousness. You know what the Bible says? He's going to die in his sins. Yeah. Now that proves that you better, that's faith and works in the Old Testament. Now how they would like to argue is, no, that's just physical death. That has nothing to do with spiritual salvation. Uh, one, it said soul right here. Yeah. But then they're going to say, but notice it says right here that they're going to be killed, that they're going to be taken away, et cetera, et cetera. So you're going to see physical death in there. My simple answer to that is this. My simple answer to that is these people who attack Ezekiel chapter 18, they admit this. They admit that there's a doctrine called spiritual circumcision. What is spiritual circumcision? In the Old Testament, your soul was, your soul was stuck to your body. That's spiritual circumcision. If you don't understand that doctrine, I'll put the video underneath this video, all right? I'll put the video link below this video. Watch that one. I'm not going to explain it here. But the soul was stuck to the body in the Old Testament. When Jesus died on the cross, what happened was then the soul was separated from the body. So the soul is in the body, but it's no longer stuck to the body. Why? Because the Holy Spirit divided your spiritual nature from your fleshy nature. That's the reason why. So it became like this. So these people who attack Ezekiel 18, they believe this doctrine, the soul was stuck to the body. Okay, if you agree that whatever sin he committed in his body, he would die in them, what's also contaminated too? Your soul. Whoa, what are you going to do with that? That's the easy debunking to that one. That's why I don't have to explain all of that kind of stuff or dig through it. Because you know why? They're going to post a video on that one, and I'm ready for you. All right. So that's all, so I'm just going to give a brief sentence and let them shoot off their mouths and see what happens.